And we're back. This is the camera that was active. So I'm getting a chance to take a look through one of these vintage telescopes myself. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is awesome. I mean, I like I said, I'm pretty new to this, and to be in it when we have this historic event and be able to, to uh, indulge in it, it's, it's a lot of fun. I was always interested as a kid, and eight months ago I just said, well, screw it, I'm going to go out and, and then just invest in something and, and have some fun with it. Yeah. That's an area of different temperature than the surroundings, and it's got that big thick filament going through it, right? It looks three-dimensional. Well, there was a Frenchman, yeah, it was 1865, who was going to time the transit and he got clouded out after a major voyage. Decided to spend another eight years waiting for the next one to happen, uh, which I think he got clouded out the second time too. But when he got home, they declared him dead, and his wife had remarried. And uh, okay. okay, so this is people died to to see this in centuries past. Probably the most successful person in the 18th century was a, a Frenchman. Chepe is, I think, the easiest way to say his name. So he went to Russia for the 1761, which was incredibly arduous, and he kept detailed records of he took some kind of sled up there and he was thrown out of the sled into the icy rivers. And it was just a tremendous ordeal, but he did it, and he made good observations. And then for the next one, he went to the Baja and, and got there very close to the time of the transits. So they, they chose a place where there was a typhus epidemic. And he said, well, this is where we were just going to do it. And, and they did. And, and they, I think all but one of them died. They were trying to figure out the size of the solar system. So it was a totally serendipitous operation. And he was looking at these far ones. Most of the